come on. Now, that was the recipe for making love by Harry Connick Jr. Uh, as you know, we're always very excited to hear about new singers, new young talent turning up on the big band scene. And I'm delighted to say we've captured one <laughs> in a big net sitting in front of us. He's uh, quite a journey. <laughs> a voyage <laughs> uh, to get here. His name is Shane Hampshire and welcome to the show, love. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm great. Good. Uh, well, I'm going to take you right back to the very beginning because that's a very good place to start. Absolutely. Uh, so you're 28 now. Yeah. You don't look it. Thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you started singing really young. I've always been a show-off, but it started when I was about seven or eight. But my older sister, she always took the lead parts in these kind of homemade musicals. And I just copied everything she did. She was a couple of years older. She was doing school shows, school musicals. And then when we went to secondary school, she was in Oliver. And just being in the theatre when she was doing these shows, yeah. the smell of showbiz hit me. That's what, <laughs> it does. That's, that's what it was. And, uh, you know, even if it's just the smoke coming from the stage or something, it, it excites it was, you. Absolutely. Yeah. I caught the bug. And what kind of music were you listening to? What were you kind of tuned into at this time, was it other than the kind of show tunes then? We're talking basically the kind of 1997, 1998, that kind of era. It was all pop and boy bands, yeah. girl bands. So that's the music I was listening to at that age, and I still haven't stopped, really. No. But, uh, but my sort of passion doesn't really lie there anymore. Yeah, but did you sort of know from being a tiny kid, actually, this is what I want to do? I did, actually. It's strange, isn't it? I always just managed to get people to laugh or just... I just enjoyed being silly when I was young. And singing was just a very natural part of that. Yeah. You know, I yeah. used to learn songs very easily and yeah. show off. And... But you're saying show off. Do you know what? Mm. I don't think it's showing off. I think it's entertaining. I think you actually just love singing and the effect that it has on people when if they like it. Yeah. You know, because... Um, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah this has become Let's a bit lose of a the showing off session. bit because yeah, you seem absolutely. like a very nice fella. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. So, no, your, your dad is kind of, as a lot of mums and dads out there, mm. very important, their support early on. Yeah. Your dad, uh, give him a wave actually, look at in there. Hello. Hello, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Graham, your dad? Graham, Hello, yeah. Graham, yeah. He's still here watching. <laughs> um, so he plays, uh, you know, an important role right from the start. He, yeah. And, you know, he, he doesn't kind of laugh at you when you say, I want to do this. Oh, he was so pushy. <laughs> That's not the way he'd want me to put it, but it's... Um... Encouraging. Oh, absolutely, hmm. yeah. When I had tons of self-doubt and I didn't want to do this thing or that thing, he'd really just say, you better go and do it, Yeah, you know. Because uh, otherwise own... someone else will do it. Yeah, so you, you've started then... Uh, where did you start, in the clubs or in... The, yeah. yeah, pubs and working men's clubs. And, te- and carrying and your then, own gear? Yeah, taking my own PA system that my dad bought me for my 17th birthday instead of a car, so I could go out and earn my own, basically. <laughs> but, you know, back then in, in those venues, people were still smoking as well, so you, all of your equipment and your clothes would all, all, you know, when you got home, it'd still stink of smoke, and uh, I was a non-smoker. So, yeah, it was a strange experience at the age of 17 to go in there and entertain big men and adults, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, um, Who, and And to learn how to encourage people to stop talking and to listen up. Yeah. And, you know, that's invaluable, though, isn't it? I would it? do anything to grab their attention. Yeah. yeah. At that age, I was such a cheeky little yeah. boy, you know. I'd jump up on the table and, you know, they're mid-conversation. But they, they wanted that, you know. And at the time, so now, you're, you're still singing pop stuff. There's, there's no, no, no jazz, no swing. How did this emerge? At the time, I was singing all sorts, and the more, uh, I guess, uh, about a year into my professional career, if that's what you'd call it at that time, people just... The thing is, I'd listened to Robbie Williams a lot back in the day when I was about 13, so a few years before. He really inspired me to listen to uh, big band music. For me, as a 13-year-old, hearing Robbie Williams perform... Those songs. So this is Swing When You're Winning, Swing then. When You're Winning, yeah, 2001 it came Yeah, out. do you know, I've, I often talk about this record because he did, it did a lot to open young ears and you're living proof of that, to, to turn yeah. them on to this kind of music. You know, sometimes nowadays when I'm thinking about or, or working with people who, who didn't have that upbringing, that background, um, who did as a youngster, listen to Ella and Frank and all of those older names, you know, it's easy to feel a little inferior because actually you're, you've uh, been introduced to this music via a pop singer, 
you know, a pop star or a rock star. It's just, it's weird to talk about it. But, you know, know, uh, many people would say that the kind of music that you and I sing, it is pop music. It's just pop music from a different time. So Frank Sinatra, he was a pop singer, Peggy Lee, Ella, they, you know, they could do that stuff. The first pop idols, weren't they? That's right, yeah. Now, we're going to talk to you, uh, 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 play some music now, and then we'll talk about how you dipped your toe into the big band world. But we're going to play a track from your new album, and we'll be talking about that later as well. This is Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps. you love me Come on. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. That is from the new album that I did have in front of me, but it has now gone. What's it's it called? It's OK, I'm sat right here. What's it called, Shane? It's called Shane Hampshire. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's really useful, isn't it, yeah, in an a, interview situation? Exactly. It's a self-titled album. <laughs> yeah, just get the name out there first. That was the idea. <laughs> Good lad. So uh, you uh, start working with big bands. You, you meet Ben Beddoes. How, how does this come about, then? I got sick of the pubs <laughs> pretty early on. I wanted to branch out. We got a couple of theatre shows booked in and we decided to just make the shows bigger and bigger. And so, who were you touring with then? So what, you had your own band, did you? No, I didn't. No? no. Everyone around me at the time was yeah. working with backing tracks. And, uh, uh, you know, I know. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, Claire. <laughs> I've let you down in a major no, way. No, you haven't. I, I admire you. I find them absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. But well, this is, that, that, and also, this is really interesting, though, because it's, you've come about this from such a different angle. Absolutely, yeah, completely different. Yeah. I guess I understand that they are always the same, you know, you yeah. learn the song, yeah. you sing They're the song exactly you the same every time. Yeah, mm. exactly. They'll always turn up. But, as I say, everyone was working with them, yeah. you know, in the yeah. pubs, they... They don't want to spend out more than a couple of hundred quid, you know, for sure. the night, basically. So you have to turn up with your laptop. And it did take a while to really sort of assess the situation and think, can I work with musicians? Am I good enough? You know, you never know until you start and unless you try, you know. So the more we worked with the musicians, the more comfortable I felt. And mm-hmm. Ben Beddoes was the first big band I worked with. Ben is such a gentle guy. And the band was so lovely. It was probably the perfect band to play with. And how did it feel from that very first second? It's pretty special. It's, can you describe? Because I often try and ask people to describe. Because unless you have stood in front of a big band, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, it's almost like you feel a physical presence, don't you? Yeah, it's probably not just this, but you know the vibrations and the sort of rasping from yeah. the trumpets, and it does give you goosebumps. Yeah. You know, um, people throw that phrase around, and you know sometimes on stage with a big band behind me, I get goosebumps. And I'm not really even supposed to be the one enjoying myself, you know, but I often am. You can't beat it. Yeah. Well, let's have some more music. Uh, We are going to play another track from Shane Hampshire, (laughs) this new CD. Uh, But actually, before we do that, I should mention that you you meet this guy, Evan Jolly. Yeah. And is that when you were playing with the Ben Beddoes band? Evan was the... um, one of the trumpet players in the band, but whenever I worked with the band, he wanted to be on piano to musically direct, which came in handy because I I had some gigs coming up where I needed a band, a smaller band, and I asked Evan and he became my MD. How exciting, because he is an amazing arranger, isn't he? I think so, yeah, I'm glad to say so. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, um, I've never met anyone who's got a bad word to say about it. And he starts writing charts for you, or giving you some sort of ideas about, you know, direction and such? Yeah, well, at the time I met Pete Long um, randomly at a gig. Me and my dad asked him for some advice about getting into, like, sort of London clubs, and he said, come up with a show and let the show sell the show, you know, because no-one's going to know your name in London. Uh, So I went to Evan and I said... I need to put on a show. He started making my some new arrangements for me. I was around his house just kicking about and he said, why don't we do an album? It was a great proposal. <laughs> I, I, I had to say yes, basically, because it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Right. As you say, he's a great arranger. Yeah. I'm so proud of the arrangements on this album. Oh, let's hear another one. We're going to play Hallelujah, mm. I Love Her So. Why did you choose this? Evan told me to. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, Evan and I, as, as we've uh, established, have been working together for yep. a long time. He knew what kind of sound I was after yeah. and he had some great ideas for some tunes. This is a song that I'd heard a couple of times. He knew that we needed a great shuffle on the album 
It's such an exciting arrangement. Oh, I'm let's excited. hear it. I can't wait. Let's give it a spin. sounds of Shane Hampshire. That was Hallelujah, I Love Her So. Uh, from the new album, Shane Hampshire. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yeah. How did it happen, actually? How does somebody like yourself, 28 years old, I love the story, I love the fact that you've grafted, you've taken the road less travelled by and you've worked really hard, you've had the support of your family and you've made some friends in this big band world. Yeah. And hopefully you should be confident in what you're doing because you know it doesn't matter if you haven't been to music college or all those things you should just enjoy what you're doing but you know i know how expensive it is to make a big band record yeah who did you mug <laughs> <laughs> when evan and i were initially talking about the album evan just agreed to put up half as well so that's another reason why i just had to say yes initially we were talking about pulling in some favors but the longer the process went on, we just decided we needed to do it properly. Mm -hmm. So we recorded it at Angel Studios Ooh. and, uh, you know, got the whole band in all at once because there are diff different ways of doing it. Then we got some strings brought in as well from Prague. Let me just stop you there. You got the musicians in all at once, mm. yeah? yeah? So I read somewhere that the big band was recorded in one day. That's that true, yeah. Now, you see, that just thrills and gladdens my heart because that's, <laughs> that's how it should be, you know? That's, yeah. that's tremendously exciting. The ilk of these musicians, yeah. it just speaks volumes when you hear that, I suppose. They're that good. Well, I can see who, you know, some of the players on here, yeah. uh, Simon Gardner, Andy Greenwood. I've just been playing with him today, yeah. actually. <laughs> Tom Richards, uh, Elliot Henshaw, Rob Barron on piano. You, you know, produced by Gary Thomas. This is a serious... Big budget record, isn't it? It sounds fantastic. Thank you, yeah. It came across as daunting to start off with, you know, but I work with these guys regularly too and they're as enthusiastic about this kind of thing as I am. And now where can people get this record? On iTunes, Spotify and Amazon mm -hmm. and you can buy a CD from my website. Yeah, and that, to be honest, it's so easy to do that these days, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Would you like to be signed to a, a label? Or, I mean, I think it's very exciting being on your own label. Because there's endless possibilities when you're doing it yourself, that's the thing. If I have an idea, I just want to do it. I'm pretty fearless, I suppose, when it comes to... And that's how I've got to where I am, you know. Well, good on you, love. I know that one of your favourite records yeah. when you got into this kind of music was uh, Sinatra at the Sands. Yeah. What, if, what if impact did that have on you? It was one of the saxophone players in the Len Phillips big band who said, have you heard this album? He said, oh, I'll bring you a copy next time. I listened to it and I couldn't stop listening to it. So I still listen to it now pretty much every day. It's kind of like my Bible, really, in a way. I learned a lot from listening to that album, yeah. Well, Shane, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and I wish you, really wish you well. Thank you with very this much. Project. You keep us posted how you're getting on. I will. And we'll play you out and you can sing along uh, with I've Got You Under My Skin. Thanks, Claire. Thank you.